we are approaching both Diwali and Halloween, so it's a good time to distribute some candies and sweets among children. So let's try and do that by solving our today's problem, which is candy. In this problem, we are given an array which represents the ratings of n different children and we are tasked with distributing candies among them. By distributing these candies, we have to maintain two conditions. One being that each child must have at least one candy and the other one being that children with higher rating should get more candies than their neighbors. The end goal of this problem is to return the minimum number of candies we need to have so that we can maintain these conditions and distribute the candies successfully. Well, I think the problem statement is pretty clear and I hope it makes sense what are we exactly trying to achieve. I don't think there is much to discuss in terms of what the problem statement is or what exactly are we supposed to do. So let's take an example and take it to the whiteboard to see better how we can get to the solution. We are at the whiteboard and I've written down an example. Now this example doesn't really match any of the examples given to us in the problem description. Uh, well that's because uh, I think those examples doesn't really do justice. justice. That's why I've taken this example just for the convenience of explaining you. So I hope you don't mind that. So the ratings given here are 103 to 1 and we are supposed to tell the number of candies that are required to uh, distribute them properly. So first thing that we have to do uh, or the first condition that we had to satisfy in the problem was that each child must have at least one candy. And I think that is pretty easy to comply by. We just have to give one candy to each of the children. And we just do that and we ensure that the first condition is satisfied. Now we worry about the second condition, which stated that children with higher rating should get more candies than their neighbors. So how can we go about checking that? Well, we have to go through each of the child and see that if their rating is higher than their neighbors, does their candy also reflect the same? And if that's not the case, we'll update the amount of candies and move to the next index. And we have to keep doing that. So let's try and do that once throughout the array and see how the values are updated and then we'll see if that gives us the solution or not. So if we check the first index that we have, uh, I'm just taking uh, one based indexing for explanation. Uh, coding will have zero based indexing, but for explaining, I think first bit indexing is more natural to us. So for the first index, we see that our rating is one and the second index rating is zero. Uh, so the rating for the first index is higher, but the candies are not higher. So we need to update the candies to be the neighbor's candies count plus one. So in this case, the candies will be updated to two. Now for our second index, we see that the value is actually smaller than both of the neighbors. So we don't really need to update anything. So this remains once. And for the second index, we see that the value is actually greater than both the second index and the third index, uh, basically the fourth index. And in that case, we need to update this value and both are equal candidates. Well, in these cases, we have to update it to be the maximum of those values plus one. So whichever neighbor has maximum number of candies, we'll update that to be plus one of that. Now, both of them have same number of candies in this case, so we don't really need to do anything. And we can just pick any one and update the count to be two. Now, we come up to the fourth index and we see that it is actually smaller than our third index. So we don't really need to do anything again, but it is greater than the fifth index. And in such cases, we need to update the count to be neighbor plus one. And that will become plus one from here, which makes it two again. And finally, our fifth index is actually smaller than both of the neighbors. So we don't really need to update anything. So this is what we have right now. Now this shows us the first issue that we have in this problem that even though we updated all the elements from left to right, the condition is not necessarily satisfied because these two conditions are breaking now. And this happened because, uh, well, going from left to right, we updated both of these values, but this particular index never really get to see the updated value that's going to be at the fourth index. The value it saw was a previous value that was going to be updated in the future iteration. And because of that, we'll have to do another iteration left to right to solve this problem. And if we had more values as such, we'll have to do these loops multiple times. And in worst case scenario, that will be n into number of candidates time. And let's say the number of uh, ratings, the maximum ratings that can give, be given to somebody. That you, um, you had. So that would be n into k times. Now, this is a big issue. n into k is pretty slow. So 
how can we make it more optimized so let's first try to think of what are the conditions that we are actually taken care of by visualizing the problem so if we visualize this particular example we'll see that don't mind the graph that graph is pretty bad but the first index has a value of one then the second index has a value of zero then the third one has a value of three then two and then one so the graph looks something like this so when we updated the values uh, we were update uh, updating the value of the first index properly because it's only going to have neighbors from left to right and we are updating the value of this correctly because both the values are greater so it is in a valley basically both of the things are hills so we don't really need to update the values in such cases and when there was a decreasing array the issue was that this value gets updated after the hill value where it should also account for the value on the right of it so we are able to account for the value on the left if we are going from left to right but we are not able to account for the values on the right let's try to take up one more example visually to explain my point better so when you have an increasing array from left to right we are able to accumulate the values properly because when we'll be going from left to right we'll be updating the values from left to right so that whenever this value will check its left and right neighbors candies it will see the updated count from this neighbor but that is not happening when the arrays are actually decreasing in this sense because this value gets updated after this value and therefore the count is actually stale so how can we go about optimizing that well if we just run the loop once from left to right so that all the candies information is accumulated from left to right and all of those values are updated correctly and then we run a second loop which goes from right to left so that we ensure that the candies informations are updated from right to left and that way the uh, neighbor always sees the latest information from their other neighbors and we update the values twice so once we update the values while going from left to right checking the neighbors and updating the candies to be maximum of the smallest neighbors and same we are doing in the right to left loop and that way we'll ensure that in two loops we'll be able to solve the problem so that will make it o into 2 into n which makes the worst time complexity to be o of n as well so the order of increase remains o of n and i hope that makes sense uh, let's try to code that up and i think you'll be able to better see how this problem is actually working and the solution is basically using o of n space because we are maintaining the amount of candy somewhere that we'll finally sum up and time complexity is also o of n because we are just doing two loops one going from left to right and one going from right to left and ensuring that the candies information is updated carefully i hope the solution is making sense and the visualization help if it did please let me know in the comments down below and if you have any doubts more than happy to answer we are back at lead code and now we can finally start to code up the solution that we just discussed so first of all we need some kind of a data structure where i can store the candy each child is going to get at the end of all the operations and finally i can take the sum of that data structure and tell the minimum number of candies i need to satisfy all of the conditions so for that i'm just going to use a slice and go length so candies is going to be the slice which is going to store the amount of candy each child is going to get and the first operation that we discussed during our solution space is that each child must get at least one candy and for that i'm just going to use a simple for loop which is going to start at zero and go till length of ratings which is basically the total number of children and for each one of them i'm gonna append one inside of candies which means each child is gonna get one candy cool so this is done now the second part of the problem space where we have to satisfy the second condition in which i have to run two loops one that goes from left to right and the other one which goes from right to left and checks the neighbors and updates the candy count as per the condition so for that i'm just going to first write the for loop which is going to go from left to right and see how we have to update the conditions in there so again i'm just going to use the same loop i plus plus and that way i am inside of the ratings array and i have to check for each of the ratings that the candies count condition is satisfied or not so first of all for the zeroth index i don't have any left neighbor so for the zeroth index i don't need to worry about that but how do i code it up cleanly so first of all i have to maintain some kind of max candies and i'm going to instantiate it at zero because if the neighbor has one amount of candy 
then my candy should also remain one if the max count is doesn't greater than that so if the rating is not greater than that the neighbor and i can have same values so i'm going to contain a max candies which is going to start at zero then i'm going to check both of the neighbors and see which one of them is actually lower than my current value and if that's the case which one of them has the maximum candies in them so that i can update the count to the maximum of the smallest neighbor so for that, I'm just going to check the left and the right neighbor. And for the zeroth case, I don't want to check the left neighbor. So first of all, I'll have to check if my i is greater than zero, then and uh, ratings i minus one is less than ratings i. So if my left neighbor is actually smaller than my current index, I'm going to update max candies to be uh candies at index i minus one and the second condition is that if my index is less than len ratings minus one and my ratings at i plus one is actually less than ratings at i Then at that case also, I'm going to update the max candies to be the max of max candies, comma candies at i plus one. So in fact, here it will not really make a difference, but I think just for consistency, let's just also make this max candies as well. So this should be the maximum amount of candies we are ever going to get. So if later the problem changes to having two candies or stuff like that, our code will not need to change, but that doesn't really matter. So these two conditions are satisfied. And after that, I'm just going to update my candies at I to be max candies plus one. So this way I'm ensuring that whichever candidate has the maximum number of candies, I'm going to update the current or uh, indexes count to be greater than that candidate and the candidate basically signifies that the rating is smaller than the current index I'm at and that's how I'm ensuring that here. Now that uh, this condition is written, I have to do something very similar but just from right to left. So I'm just going to write this again. Uh, I can also convert this into a function and then call that function two times. That is what you will do if you are doing it in an interview or if you are doing it on a project because dry coding you have to do and repeat yourself but here i'm just going to take the convenience of doing it on lead code and i'm just going to rewrite it again so len rate it's going to start at len ratings minus one it's going to go till i is greater than equal to zero and in this case i'm going to go i minus minus and in here i'm just going to do the same thing again and finally i can return the sum of my candies and for that i'm just going to write a sum which is going to start at zero and again, I'm going to iterate through candies. So for that, I'm just going to use underscore comma val range candies as I don't need to do anything creative anymore with my loops. And in here, I'm just going to do sum plus equal to one. And finally, I can return sum. Yeah, that should be it. I hope the solution is making sense to you. This was the condition that we all had to think about. And the only creative part of the solution is that we have to go left to right and right to left and all of the other operations that we are doing are actually redundant. So basically when we were going here and seeing that we have to do multiple loops that were happening because when we see this decreasing trend when the values of this particular index is greater than the next elements, the way the values get updated here when we are going from left to right is that the last element is updated based on its values correctly but the previous element only sees the older picture of this element's candies values and that's why it is not being able to update correctly and that's why the condition breaks after an update. But to take care of these kind of decreasing loops, we run and loop from right to left and that ensures that the same thing that was happening from left to right is maintained in right to left and the candies values are updated correctly. So the way we were doing it before and we had to do multiple loops, this was actually a redundant operation where these candies values that were already done correctly were getting updated again and again and these values were updating in the wrong order which was increasing the time complexity so i hope the solution made sense to you now and now let's try to finally run the code that we have just written hoping there are no syntax errors in this and there are not 
So cool. It is accepted for both of the cases and it actually ran without any compilation errors. So <laughs> proud of myself. And let's just finally submit this. I hope this just works and I hope the solution made sense to you. So submit. Drum rolls. And as we expected, it submitted, it beats 100% in runtime, 52.5% in memory. I think maybe people have figured out a solution where you don't even have to maintain a candies array anymore. That would be pretty interesting. If you come up with a solution like that, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll be super interested. But I think this is solved for the day. And I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Bye-bye.